Hey everyone, doing another video today. Wanted to revisit our UI messages and banners. And um, to get started, just a couple things. Uh, the, the objective banners were previously broken so they wouldn't work in Forge. And those have now been updated so they're working now. Um, so you don't have to actually go into a custom game to test it, which is great. Um, and then also had a special request from one of the viewers on my other uh, UI video. Uh, they were asking me to go in more depth on how to send messages to, you know, lists of players or like everyone in the game, things like that, which uh, I didn't cover before. So we're going to cover that today as well. So uh, to, to get us started, I've got a couple dummies set up. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to use them for our triggers. So let's just come in here and grab our, from our events, we'll do an on object damaged. And let's actually grab two of those. And then we need to get the object references here. So, all right. We've got both of our dummies selected and we'll add those references. So let's, uh, let's do the first one as a brute. Second one is a grunt. And first off, let's, let's talk about the objective banner. So the object, objective banner is at the bottom of the screen and it essentially stays up until you turn it off. Um, so it's a little different than the other banners that stay up for a few seconds then go away. Um, let's just give you a quick demo of it. So the attacking object, we can use it for our player because players are our objects. Um, and then we need a message to plug in as well as there's this true false for enabled. So this is really important with objective banners. Setting enabled to false means that it clears any banner that that player has. At, there also doesn't, doesn't need to be a message connected because false doesn't use a message. It just clears everything. Setting it to true enables the message that you have set up. So you need a message template plugged in for the true version or true uh, setting. So in our UI menu, we have two different message options. One of them is, well, it's just message. The other one's message B. The first one is mainly um, string. So it has string one, string two, and a player. Let's show you that. Okay. So you have a preset list for of words for string one, for string two. The player is if you connect a player in there, it will use their name. In this case, though, uh, we're going to use the the B template. B template has um, for numbers, so X and Y for numbers, and then a single string. So when you come into this menu and go to the message template, it's going to give you this list of options. And really, you just, I mean, plug in whatever's in your X spot will come out in the X location here. Same with Y. The string will be whatever word you select. So I'm going to just use this X string option. For string one, um, I had looked in here earlier. It doesn't have the word damage. So we're just going to go with the word attack. And then for X, uh, instead of putting our a number in there, we're going to just grab the damage amount. And then we'll plug our message in here to the objective banner. So what this is saying is whenever we we damage the the brute, it's going to set the objective banner to be true, and it's going to give the message attack, which I'm realizing, oh, wait, we don't need Y. Y is empty. That's fine, because it's only using X and string. The X is going to be the damage amount. String is the word attack. So let's let's run this real quick. OK. And I noticed that my pistol does zero damage because it says zero attack. But if I throw a grenade, 
it does 280 attack and I guess it kills our grunt poor thing um, and notice how it just stays there it's nothing's going to change unless I damage the brute again now we don't have any way of clearing that message with what we set up so let's let's look at an option to do that so first off let's let's just grab a player event so we have a little more control over it and i'm going the wrong way okay events players and we'll just do when a player crouches and we can duplicate this and all we've got to do, we don't have to plug anything else in besides a player. And set it to false. So this is basically just saying when we crouch, it's going to turn off any objective banners that are in play for my character only. And keep in mind, that's what often um, questions I get. People are expecting when you plug in everything that it's going to happen to every player and and you, we have to actually tell it to do that which we'll cover next so i've got zero attack it's just going to stay that way but if i crouch it clears the banner and the banner's got a little animation so it goes away after about you know half a second or so crouch yep okay so let's Let's take a look now at, and again, I only have myself in the game, but I'm going to show you what you would do if you wanted to have um, multiple people get the same message, for example. So let's, let's grab a few things. First one is we're going to want in our logic menu the for, for each player. So this is a loop takes a list and it's going to it's going to do output for every player in that list. So it's going to do it 12 times if there's 12 players in the list. It'll do it twice if there's two players. It'll do it zero times if there's no players in that list. Um, and we're going to tell it to execute this for every player. And then let's put the player if we connect to current player then when it's on that list it's going to do it for the message for each player. Now let's add a list for it. So there's a few ways you can get lists. One of them would be just like creating a list, but um, normally one of the easiest ways to get players is come down to the players section. And there's a couple nodes. So you can do get all players. You can get, get all players on a team. Um, I think that's the main two in this section. Um, let's let's start with just get all players, right? So this would be every player in the game. Um, we'll just put it up here, plug those players in as a list. So this is telling it whenever we shoot the target dummy, we are going to loop through every player in the game. And for each one of those players, we're gonna set their objective banner to be attack with the damage amount right so we should basically get the same outcome as we did before however if there were other players in the game they would see the same message oh, i missed it the first time they would see that zero attack as well right and then if i crouch it's only going to remove the banner for me because i haven't set it up to remove the banner for everyone else so let's say we wanted to do that this let's just duplicate these right because we just need the the list of players and the loop to go through them so what this is going to do though is it's not going to be in each individual player that crouches it's going to be if I crouch every player in the game is going to have their their objective banner removed right if I wanted it to be just each player, then I would remove this and put player in there. And it would just be the player that crouched has their objective banner removed. So that's that's kind of the gist with objective banners. Now I wanna show you another cool option with objective banners. 
uh, because the thing is, is the objective banner basically will update as quickly as you tell it to update. Oh, actually, I didn't want to remove that one. We'll leave that for now. Um, but let's let's try something a little bit different. So if we go to events custom and we do an every end seconds. Actually, you know what, let's not do that one. Let's do, um, we'll do a on player mark. So this is gonna be initiated by us marking. And let's do a, in our logic section for n iteration. So this is basically, it's kind of like a loop, but instead we're setting a cap on how many times it does it by setting the number of iterations. So an iteration is how many times it processes. So let's come here and let's just do it 25 times, okay? And we don't want it to go through this super fast without us being able to see it. So let's do, oh, clicked back too many times. Logic, wait for n seconds. So we're gonna tell it to wait one second in between so that it, it doesn't go so fast that we can't keep track of it. So when a player marks, we're gonna tell it to wait one second and then actually, you know what, we should probably do our objective banner in front of that. So we'll do that here in a second. just so it doesn't wait a second before it does it, it'll do it and then it'll wait a second before it does it again. Um, let's grab our message template. We'll do B because we're doing a number. And let's take a look at our options. So first we need to turn or we need to pick another thing. And I think I think we have an option for seconds in this menu. So bear with me as we scroll down to the very bottom. Uh, there's only second. Okay, well, I'm not gonna spend all day on this, so we'll just use second. It won't really be proper grammar, but that's okay for what we're doing. And we're gonna plug in current iteration. So keep in mind, this will start at iteration one. It'll do it once, and then it'll go to iteration two, and so on. So we're telling it, print this message to the player. Well, we don't have a player plugged in yet, so let's, let's plug in the player that marked. And then we also need to enable this to true because otherwise it won't do anything. So we're saying set the objective banner to the number of iteration and it'll say second. And then it's gonna wait a second and keep doing it. So we should see it go one second, two second, three second, and so on. Let's give it a shot. But the cool thing is, is you can use it for like say a timer See that? It's just counting for us. So there's a lot of options you can use the objective banner for. Stuff that stays on screen, you know, it, it's it's really great. So I'm glad that they updated it and fixed it. It's a lot easier to use when you can test it in Forge. And then if I uh, see if I cancel it, it went away. Oh, I think we were at the end of it anyway. Let's see what happens if we cancel it a few seconds in. It went away, but it came back because it was still going through its loop of iterations, right? So we would have to do something to tell it to essentially stop in the middle of all those iterations if we wanted to be able to stop it in the middle. All right, let's, let's go on to our 
push push notifications. So I think we covered most of the basic concepts so far, but um, I'll just uh, do a quick demo for anyone that still wants to see it. So, or I said push, but I, I guess the word is splash. No, it's, now I'm confusing myself. Let's, let's pull up the menu and look at it. Um, oh, push splash to player. That's, um, this is both things that I was thinking of, so I wasn't too far off. All right, so we've got push splash to player. Um, if we want it to go to every person in the list, then uh, we've got to use this loop thing, right? So if we just do get all players in the game, execute per player, do the current player, which is again, the one that where we're at on the list, set a duration, uh, let's just do six seconds. And the message, we've got to open our menu again and grab a message. And let's look at our options. So you are, uh, see if there's anything. There we go. You are a hack. Okay, so <laughs> if uh, we plug our message in, what this is saying is when we damage the target, the, the grunt, it's going to push a splash for six seconds to all players in the game, telling them that they are a hack. So let's give that a shot. You are a hack. And if I wanted that to only push to one team, then, you know, we just replace our list where we've gotten all players. Let's come in here and go to our objects, or sorry, I think it's our players menu. And we'll just say get all players on team. Plug that in set the team to i think i'm currently on eagle so let's try that if i'm truly on eagle see how it sent it for me and if i switch teams to cobra oh, let's restart it because our dummy's gone but I shouldn't get a message now because I'm not on Eagle. See? So that's a, that's a quick overview of the different um, UI message options. Um, I think between the, the other video I made and this one, we should have covered just about everything, but I know that with more people making, you know, single player or team experiences with the new UI that's come out, wanted to, you know, give you all the resource you need to make a real, you know, fleshed out experience. So uh, feel free to put any comments down. Um, you know, as always, appreciate your, your support. And um, if you haven't yet subscribed, feel free to subscribe. I'm going to continue to make videos uh, when I can and hopefully help you all out. So thank you.